Hey, everybody. Uh, thank you for coming in. Let some other people's audio finish connecting before I keep going. Hey, everybody. Uh, we're here today with 2016 Olympic gold medalist, Maddie Musselman. Uh, Maddie, how are you doing today? I'm great. I'm excited to be here. Definitely um, a crazy time, but excited to share my story a little bit and answer any questions that people might have. Yeah, well, let's get to it. Please take it away. Perfect. All right. So I was just thinking about sharing my story about water polo and my journey to the national team. It's definitely a little bit of a crazy one and a unique, uh, unique situation that I got to have at a very young age. Um, so I started playing water polo when I was eight, uh, but I played a bunch of different sports. I did like soccer. I, I grew up swimming in my neighborhood swim team. I did junior lifeguards, which is uh, down at the beach and bunch of competitions. So I was always kind of involved in a competitive environment growing up. And once I started playing water polo, I loved it because it was kind of a mixture of so many sports that I watched on TV, so many sports that I played. And my sister played as well. She's four years older than me. And I wanted to kind of follow in her footsteps a little bit and just do whatever she did. So I started playing at CDM, uh, Crown Del Mar Club, and I did 10 unders there. I did 12 and unders, 14 unders, 16 unders, all at the same club and loved it and I always had an Olympic dream uh, I was always wanted to go to the Olympics when I was super young I just didn't really know what sport I would want to do and at first I was really involved in possibly doing swimming I you know com loved being competitive in the swimming environment in our neighborhood but never kind of went into a club where that became a reality and so when I jumped into water polo I did the ODP Olympic Development Program and that's kind of where my dream kick started and started to really become a reality to me that, you know, being surrounded by Olympians, being able to talk to Olympians and kind of have that dream set out for me in a, in a way where I could see it being, being coming soon or whatever, 2020, 2024 was kind of where my eyes were set. And I tried out in seventh grade. I actually didn't make, uh, make the team in seventh grade and I came back in eighth grade I tried out again and ended up making the B team, which at the time I was so excited, but wasn't completely satisfied with, with where I was. So in ninth grade, I did ODP again, uh, loved it, uh, loved the pipeline. It was something that I, I felt a lot of fire in um, playing water polo and it was obviously really competitive. And that's when I made my first, my first team. I traveled for the first time out of the country playing water polo. I went to Argentina on my first trip for the cadet, cadet national team. And Super exciting, super fun. My first time representing the US in uh, obviously a small way with the cadet national team and playing a bunch of different different countries for the first time and having my family come. It was definitely really exciting. And I knew the moment that that trip happened that I wanted to keep doing it and keep grinding away uh, whatever way I could to get to the top. And surprisingly, I actually AK invited me that next fall to train with the senior national team. So I kind of jumped really quickly from being on the cadet team at uh, 15 years old and going to ask to be trained with the national team at the highest level. And for me, it was more of an opportunity to grow, to learn um, and find those values and strengths and weaknesses that I needed to have to be a great water polo player. And he thought it would be great to have me. And so after high school practice or after school, I would actually, my parents would drive me all the way to LA to train with the senior team. So I did that for my freshman, sophomore, and my junior year of high school. I, I trained with them. Um, I, I didn't actually travel with them very much. I, I started traveling with them my sophomore year summer, but I was like player number 15. I, I didn't really play much. It was more just kind of for the experience, uh, like I said before. And I actually made my first roster team when I was 17. I made the world championship team in 2015. And that's kind of when my Olympic dream started coming a little bit faster than I thought it was. And, you know, Adam told me that, you know, it was my choice whether I wanted to take, you know, to come and train for a full year before the Olympic games and see if I'd possibly make it. I, he was telling me that I probably wouldn't have a very high chance. You know, I had a lot of things I needed to work on, but it's such a great experience. Why not try it out? So after that summer, uh, I had a pretty successful summer with the senior team and I was asked to, to train. So my senior year of high school, I went online. I, I went to an online school called Laurel Springs and I played water polo at the same time, which was super fun um, to be able to be in high school 
you know, live at home, still be with all my friends, but also play water polo at the highest level to try to make an Olympic team. And I learned so much. The team was amazing, uh, super talented, obviously. And uh, I only, I've, I've only lost three times playing with this national team. And uh, ever since I, I've joined the team and it's been a whirlwind of experience for sure. And actually on my birthday, the Olympic team was named and, and I ended up making it, which was absolutely insane. Uh, 18 years, I just turned 18 and uh, told I was going to be an, a, be an Olympian and crazy, crazy moment for me. And, you know, off to the Olympic games in Rio and the team was, we were insane. It was so fun to play, uh, play with that group and uh, come together. We uh, just to kind of go through my Olympic experience it, for me, you know, when you watch it on TV, it's, it's, you know, it's exciting and you get to watch all these different athletes uh, who are at the top really compete for, for, to be the best in the world. And for me, I was surrounded by them. You know, I was uh, in the elevator with Michael Phelps. I was on a bus with Serena Williams. So like crazy things were becoming a reality to me that, you know, I was introducing myself to people who of course I knew, but they, you know, put me on that equal platform where they wanted to know about my sport and know about me. And so it was so crazy and opening ceremonies was uh, in amazing in terms of just being with other countries and with other athletes who are competing uh, to be the best, like I said. And I think the best part um, for me, at least, uh, being in the Olympic Village and being surrounded by those athletes and especially for water polo, water polo is the entire two weeks of the Olympic Games. So you have athletes come in who compete for two or three days, maybe for a week max who actually leave. So they only see the beginning or the end of the Olympics. And for us, we get to see the whole thing through. We, we get there a week early, we leave a couple days after it ends. And so I love that about water polo is you kind of get that whole, that whole circle of the Olympics for the full two weeks and you get to experience everything. You get to go see other athletes. Um, we didn't go to any events uh, in person to watch, but we were able to watch it on TV and you know, as we were traveling to the pool and just being involved in other people's successes through the U.S. team and seeing them in the village and congratulating them. And they were super invested in what we were doing. And like I said, water polo is not the biggest sport um, to be on TV. And people were like, oh, we were watching your games. Like, it was just super cool to have that um, uh, people come up to you and be like, oh, I watched you play. And that for me was like, yes, finally water polo is getting out there. And, you know, to witness it on the biggest stage is was amazing and uh, after following the Olympics uh, of course you know we get a gold medal it's the most insane moment of my entire life you got to celebrate with my family and everyone traveled to Rio uh, but my favorite part was actually coming back to um, my hometown here in Newport and everyone was on my street uh, welcoming me home and I was able to kind of share my medal with all these young athletes uh, who played water polo who didn't play water polo just wanting to be there and I uh, that was my favorite moment because I knew that I had been an inspiration in some way to all of these, all these little kids. And that's when my fire kind of started again to want to do it again. And of course you, you, when you get a gold medal or when you win something or you're, you know, you get to the top, you are satisfied for, for me, at least I'm satisfied for probably an hour and then I want to do it again. And so that moment when I got home, I was so excited to start another journey again to, towards the Olympics and the Olympic dream just was reignited uh, again. So I went off to UCLA, I go to UCLA. I am uh, would be a senior this year, but I'm taking the year off to train for 2020, 2021 now actually. But uh, I'm a pre-med uh, major at UCLA. I wanna go into the medical field one day and play water polo there of course with, um, a bunch of teammates that I, for my freshman year, I played with a bunch of national team teammates and currently play with uh, players who are in the pipeline as well, who are looking to possibly go to the Olympics one day. And it's, it's an amazing experience getting the opportunity to play with them and be an inspiration to put people that you play with who have the same dream as you. And, you know, obviously trying to win a national championship. Uh, I made it to the final my freshman year. And then I actually got injured my, my sophomore year, got a concussion. So I didn't play in NC2As, uh, of course, a bummer. And then going into my junior year, my the summer of 2018-19, I got shoulder surgery. So I've been rehabbing a lot for the past couple of years, uh, getting back to 
uh, being the best that I can be without having any inner injury. So I'm excited that I'm, I'm back, but of course with the pandemic, it, it causes a little bit of bumps in the road. Um, but we, you know, coming back from surgery, my junior year, uh, that summer was my first time back with the, with the national team after getting surgery and we qualified for the Olympics again, which was an exciting moment with a new group of girls who are excited to go on this journey towards the Olympics as well. And, you know, played in world championships again in South Korea, where we had, of course, a, a crazy accident there as well. And kind of had to go through another adversity as a team. And we've been through a lot as a team. We, in September, we did a silent retreat, which was a complete silence for seven days. So Adam, Adam's put us through a lot in terms of uh, mental strategies. We've, we've climbed mountains. We've, we've done a lot of team build, building and bonding to, to make this journey so worth it. And we were pretty close to the end. The team was supposed to be named in May. But of course, the Olympic postponement kind of changes everything. But I'm pretty excited to get back to work when we start. We actually start on Monday this week um, swimming in small groups, which is exciting uh, just to get something to do um, and move forward and hopefully go towards the Olympics again and, and be successful there. But that's just a little bit about my journey. If you guys have any questions or comments. That's incredible, uh, <laughs> to say the least. From You had a really long experience with Team USA from a very young age. That's, uh, and I don't think a lot of players can say they've had that type of road. Um, so that's really, really unique. Um, tell us about you know, Team USA's senior national team. Tell us a bit about your team culture. Yeah, for sure. So I think from a young age, like I said, I was kind of thrown right into the mix. and to be exposed to people who are very professional athletes who take everything they do super seriously. I, I was for sure matured in a, in a very positive way. I learned to be responsible. I learned time management. I learned all these skills that I've taken with me and everything that I do outside of water polo. And for us as a, as a team, the expectation is always really high, but it's also really free. Um, it's not too structured where it's, it's, you feel uncomfortable going outside boundaries. Like everyone's comfortable being who they are. Uh, and that's what I love about our team. And we have a lot of diversity. People come from different places. Uh, people are interested in different things. And we have a very open openness about our team that I don't think a lot of other international teams have where that connection helps in the pool. And if you're able, you know, we're very vulnerable with each other, which is great. And it allows us to, really succeed when we're in the pool, when you know someone's weakness, when you know someone's strengths, whether that's in the pool or even outside the pool, what they're going through. And when I first joined the team, it was really scary. And, you know, people asking you questions and, you know, what do you, why do you love water polo? Like, what's your passion? And at the time I like, I loved water polo, but I really didn't know what really fueled me and what was, what made me tick or what made me do things a certain way. And when you get into that environment, you're kind of you're discovering that and people ask you right away. And so it's definitely pushed me out of my bubble and it's made me the person I am, which I love. And the team has always been that way from stories that I've heard before I was even on the team. And that's special and that's why the team has been so successful in my opinion. And to have that culture be generated by Adam, who obviously wants it a certain way, but gives us the freedom to really be ourselves, which like I said, you don't find that on a lot of teams. Totally. What are some examples of things that an athlete can do on a team to kind of help create that type of culture that you guys have? For sure. I mean, everyone's different. And first of all, it's owning up to the fact that you are different in whatever way that you are and being yourself. And like I said, it's, it's hard when you first join a team and you have, you know, fear of judgment or doubt, uh, all those, those thoughts that come up in your mind. And once you're able to really accept, accept those or be aware of them, it's easier to really open up to a team. And for me, I write everything down. I'm one of those people that loves to see those things in front of me, those goals that I have, uh, those whatever values that I really appreciate of a, of a teammate. I write down everything my teammates do. It's just something that it has become a habit and that's allowed me to really connect with my team. And we are a team who's actually been really involved with mindfulness, uh, really involved with 
meeting outside of the pool. It's not just always about water polo. And those are the moments that you get really connected with your teammates when it's not always just about the sport you're playing. It's, it's bigger than sport and it's bigger than just, you know, throwing a ball with each other. It's, it's more than that. And we, we love that about it. And it's definitely was a work in progress. It's not something that I just did right away, but uh, learning about yourself and being honest with yourself and asking your teammates what they think about you or what they think about what you just did, whether that's in the pool or outside of the pool, but definitely writing things down. It's something that I do. That's awesome. What advice do you have for athletes? Uh, so for example, what are the like the most important skills you think a 14 u athlete needs to have mastered before they actually play in high school? And then what are some skills a high school athlete needs to have before they play in college? That's a good question. So I, you know, reflecting back on it, I can say so many things, but I probably wasn't exactly doing them. And that's why I love being able to help those generations below me who are looking to be better. So for me, I for sure wish I was more time managed. I, you know, to be able to kind of set out a schedule, you know, you're in school and you're also wanting to play water polo and be great at it. You really kind of have to make a schedule and it, it sounds super like, ah, oh, do I really want to make a schedule? It sounds like I'm working, but it, it helps so much to have something laid out. And as a, as a young athlete, you know, you, you think that that's not something that you should do, but it's super helpful, you know, sit down with your, with whoever who's helping you and um, be like, what do I need to do to be better? Whether, whether it's at water polo or, you know, talk to your coaches, talk to your family. Um, and then another thing is for me, I've, I've experienced a lot of injury and something that I always tell athletes who want to be able to go into high school or go into college feeling good uh, or be prepared in the best way possible is to make sure that you do everything you can to be healthy, uh, do everything you can uh, in terms of whether that's shoulder bands, whether that's um, exercising the right way. It helps so much when you get into, you know, get into the pool and you're playing up against people who, who are, you know, different than you, who have different strengths, different weaknesses than you, and you're prepared for it. And I was injured actually in high school. Uh, I didn't have the right throwing mechanics. And so I wish I had done all of those things so that I wouldn't have had to go through what I did. And it is what it is. I, I'm better for it for sure. But that's one of my biggest things to tell younger kids is to make sure that you are prepared before you go into a game, whether that's stretching something super small, put sunscreen on, like, I know it sounds super silly, but wear as much sunscreen as you can. You know, I, I train in the pool for 10, 11 hours, 12 hours a day sometimes, well, eight hours, but I like to say 10 or 12. Um, and I just get so sunburned and kids don't wear it sometimes because they want to get tan, but put sunscreen on, it's, it makes a difference. Sorry, I went on a tangent there, but. No, that's, that's great. Do you have any uh, skills that are based from the, the water? itself so any water polo skills that like a 14 u athlete needs to have this specific skill oh, sure. yeah and then yeah. so i would say 14 unders it's like the basis of movement uh, i've always been a very movement based player uh, i love being able to get around players i love being able to, i'm not the most physical I, I don't like punching people i don't like doing all, like i'll do throw a little elbows sometimes but it's not anything where I'm wanting to be super engaged with someone. And I think at a young age, when you can, when you're able to get 14 under players to really move over their hips, uh, it sound it's, we still do it on the national team over your hip shot block, over your hip, uh, driving drive defense, all those little things, uh, you do it up until the senior national team, they're not going away. And the earlier you introduce it, the, the better they are for it. And that's, what I watch in, in 14 unders is a lot of people are in the vertical position, like half the time. Um, I always like 45 degrees or above. Um, I play really high on the water. Um, it's always been very helpful for me. Uh, also, uh, into high school, I would say the skill of uh, using your legs. Uh, like I said, injury, my injury came from just using my arm. Uh, I just threw my arm out uh, because it's just what I knew how to do. And kids in high school I've, I've helped out with so many different high schools over the past couple of years and the thing I always go back to is using your legs and it's something that you really have to build that stamina to be able to get up whether that's horizontal or vertical and I've seen 
kids go from one week of not being able to do it at all to like the next week being able to finally get a little bit higher and just that feeling that they get that they're like, oh my gosh, my, my shoulders are out of the water. It makes a huge confident booster as well. Um, I'm a very vertical player in terms of like when I have the ball in my hand, I, I like being up higher. Uh, I do it when I shop block too. I, I'm very, people say that I get up really high and it's because I have really strong legs. Um, and so those are like the two things for sure. 14 unders uh, moving over your hips and, and even in high school, some high school players lose that as well. Um, but if you're in the vertical and you're on defense, that's not good. Uh, if, if you need to know that, <laughs> which I'm sure everyone does. Uh, I can definitely attest that you for sure get really high out of the water. Uh, my team was breaking down uh, your gold medal game from Rio uh, about a week or two ago. And there's one moment where you get a uh, the ball's at the 45 and you're at the like the two, I think, and you just get up really big and shoot the ball. And they're like, we're like, who's that? Who's that woman who just got up out of the water? Oh, that's, that's Maddie M, don't you know? <laughs> um, but yeah, you're definitely an inspiration in regards to cultivating really strong legs and and um, making sure you focus on the fundamentals. Uh, with with the fundamentals in mind and just like kind of going over your hips, for the coaches that are on the call, could you give us an example of how much time your team actually does spend on stuff like over the hips and drive defense, et cetera? Oh, for sure. I mean, Adam is a huge, I mean, I'm sure when you talk to him next week, it's he's all about the fundamentals. And like I said, it can be one of those things where it's boring. It's not everyone wants to do it, but it, that's how, that's where the basis of water polo kind of comes from and everything you do, you mindlessly do all of those things. And the more you do it, the better you are. And you don't even have to think about it sometimes. Like for me, it's like, Oh, I'm backwards scrolling. I didn't even know, or you don't even have to, like I said, I'm like, Oh, hips up. I used to say that to myself all of high school and college. And I'm like, oh, I just do it now because I've done it so much. And for us, uh, we actually swim in the mornings. We do weights and we swim. And usually if we have like 30 minutes left uh, of practice and our swim set is over, we do laps. So we'll just do laps of legs. We'll do laps of over our hips, whatever defensive drills that Adam uh, wants for that day. And then usually every afternoon we start off with all of those skills. So we don't ever jump right into water polo. Um, sometimes if we're like going into a scrimmage, but even before games, like we do laps of skills, uh, laps of shot blocking, laps of over our hips. It's just something that's been ingrained within each practice schedule. And uh, it, there's so many things you can do. We do a variety of things. Um, we'll either do laps of uh, defensive drills, laps, laps of offensive drills. We'll do keep away. We'll do like fun things where those skills are kind of thrown in uh, and you have to think about it and he'll, make it silent or like you can't talk. So you have to be able to do this. Uh, uh, one person can only talk. So you're working on communication while also working on uh, getting up on your legs to you know play in between someone. So he kind of makes it fun at the same time. So you can always go back to you know laps of skills where you are watching each player do each skill back and forth for however long, or you can kind of throw it into a drill where you're able to see it and he's really great at being able to exploit your weaknesses through a drill uh, or through um, whatever it may be. So when we play, you can't, you can't think about those things that you're just going um, and the more you ingrain it, um, the better you are. And we do it so much. Uh, and even when I go and help club teams or when I go and to help high school teams, I do laps. I just do what I, what I've done all my life on the national team and I just take them through laps and they're like oh laps and I'm like I'll get in and do them with you if you want me to because I do them all the time so for sure a lot of a lot of fundamentals most of the time actually ingrain the fundamentals sounds yeah. good uh with practice in mind switching over to kind of a mindset um your team does a lot of mindfulness training you mentioned earlier yes. uh what are some examples of exercises or drills that you guys do that you feel is a big benefit to take away some of that pressure that you might feel before going into a game? For sure. So ever since I joined the national team mindfulness, uh, that was the first time I had ever done mindfulness. It was, you know, it first kind of started out like very communicative, like talking about your values, uh, what makes you the best water polo player, or even like, it sounds weird to write something about yourself, but that gives you a little bit more into who you are as a player. 
Uh, so we are very commun like very vocal about what we wanted, um, which I loved because I didn't really know yet. So writing down goals um, helps so much just to have it written in front of you. Um, and then as we kind of progressed, we kind of moved into more of like a breathing, being very present. And it's something, you know, when you get into a game, you don't realize it sometimes, but what you've just done is on your mind still and, you know, mistakes you've made or uh, something you just did that you got excited about, but it's, it's still in your head and you have to be doing something else. Uh, we've done a lot of breathing exercises that take you back to the present moment. So whether that's 10 breaths, um, four in, six out, uh, simple exercises like that that seem a little silly but help so much when you get out into a game and you're like why am I still thinking about that mistake um, and you just kind of go back to the breathing and you're right back in the moment which is great for us um, what else we also do we have recently so like I said we went on a silent retreat in September which uh, you're by your you're with your team but you're by yourself mentally um, so we really worked on bunch of different skills, whether that's gratefulness, you know, being grateful for the, your teammates, your players, um, your, you know, your family while you're kind of alone. Um, also thinking of breathing, different breathing skills, uh, being able to kind of be with yourself and uh, able to kind of work together on a team. And like I said, sometimes we do drills in the pool that are completely silent. And it's weird to think about and it's something we've only just started, but it's been so helpful because you realize how important talking is when you're, when it's taken away. And so being able to kind of work with your own mind while you're doing something and you can't talk and then being able to talk and you can, it's amazing how many people who are such introverts, like I'm in a very introverted player. I don't talk much, but when it's taken away, you're like, wow, like I really want to talk right now. And once the talking is allowed, like everyone is talking and it's just, it's important to show like that confidence that comes, comes from it. And we went into a tournament once and we had just done that drill like two days before we got there and the pool was like so loud because we were all talking so much and it just mindfulness exercises like that just help so much, whether that's like allowing someone to realize uh, a weakness or a, or a skill they have that they should be using more and exploiting it through one little exercise and then being able to have that confidence when you go back into a game. Um, cause I would say I most recently have become a really vocal player because of all this mindfulness that we're doing. That's awesome. Yeah. In preparation for 2021, um, since you can't be in the pool right now, what are you doing at home to continue preparing for the Olympics? Yeah. So I've gotten this question a lot and it's changed since like the beginning of quarantine until now. Uh, because in the beginning of quarantine, the Olympics were, of course, still on. Uh, we didn't know what was really happening. So I was actually grinding away. I was working out most of the day. I bought, I brought a bunch of stuff home from the pool. I was biking. I was, you know, doing a bunch of uh, workouts that we had from our strength coach. But once the Olympics got postponed, I, uh, we were told uh, daily, daily exercise, daily workout would be sufficient because the Olympics are so far away. So I have always been an active person. So I never shied away from still doing what I was doing, but I didn't do it at the same intensity. So I've been walking around. I've been going like nine mile walks, which I've never walked really in my life. I like, I'm always in the pool. So I've been walking, I've been trying to run. I'm not a runner. Uh, I like to run by myself where no one can see me because I'm so bad at running, but I've been trying to get better at it. And my family has been going on bike rides. I've been really wanting to buy rollerblades because during this time, like, why not try something new? But I feel like I'll hurt myself because I tend to hurt myself a lot. Um, and just like, I've been using the Peloton app, which has just so many different works, workouts on it and trying new things like yoga. I'm not very good at yoga because I'm not flexible, but I've been trying so many things that I never thought I would do if I was playing water polo, which is exciting. And uh, we actually start on Monday. So I'm going to get back in the pool for like the first time in a, the longest time I've ever not been in a pool, which I hope is not too hard. Um, I'm sure Adam will make it difficult in some way because we haven't been there in a while, but hopefully I don't drown. But that starts on Monday. So I've been just doing daily, daily workouts. Very cool. How, yeah. um, how do you guys integrate mobility exercises and flexibility stuff into your trainings and how important is that to you as an athlete so important i'm 
I mean, we, we start every workout that we do with stretching or activation. Uh, we always switch it up. Um, it kind of gets repetitive if you do the same thing over and over again. And when we were before it's a game or before practice, we'll roll out, we'll do bands, we'll do whatever you personally need is always at the end, but we'll be taken through with our trainers, like what we want to do. We'll of course do arms and legs and stretch. Um, but it's something that's always been in the routine. Uh, and I've always been a huge uh, believer in that you have to warm up in order to play well, or it will hurt, or it, it will affect how you play, of course. And especially, like I said, going through injury, I've always done activation for my shoulders and it's helped me be prepared to kind of every first throw. I'm sure every player knows is like every first throw you throw without warming up hurts or is like, you're like, wow, I'm not warmed up yet. And so if you do that before you even get in, it's like, Oh, I can throw the ball as hard as I can right now because I've warmed up. And that's something that we always, we always do. We started implementing like uh, kind of since the Olympic year is so long, we try to do new things um, sometimes. And we tried yoga a couple times as a team, which of course some players are really good at who are really flexible and some who struggle through it, but it's, it's always great. And we start, we started running a little bit just to kind of get our hips used to the impact. And in the water, it's a little bit different, of course, because you, you don't have that impact with your, with your body, but uh, it's helpful in terms of just like that boost when you, when you get in the pool, um, just a couple little things, but we always activate and we always warm up. Excellent. Uh, my last question for you, and this might be a tough one, but uh, what's the best piece of advice that a coach has given you? I've gotten a lot of advice and I, the thing I love to share the most is that, and it's something that I heard because I was so young is that age is just a number and I've taken it into a lot of the things that I've done. And it's the reason why I think I've been so successful at a young age is because I never looked at myself as being too young to do something or uh, too like not, in, not capable of doing something. I've always had that belief that if I worked really hard, I would be able to achieve what I wanted and whether how long that would take me, whatever it would be, I, I'd be okay with, but it would happen at some point. And I was very adamant about it. And, you know, my high school coach, Ross Sinclair, always told me, you know, age is just a number. Adam told me when I first joined the senior team, you know, you're 15 years old, but age is just a number. And I've always taken that into what I've done. And when, you know, I'm excited to go into the workforce and, and believe that as well and take that piece of advice into what I do. Um, every single day because I am still really young and I've done a lot and I know that a lot of people who are young who are 14 unders who are in high school or even still in college um, we're lucky to be doing what we do and you can do anything at whatever age if you if you believe you can do it I love that that's awesome well I'd like to open up the Q&A so if you have a question please feel free to unmute yourself and we'll go from there perfect anyone have a question for for Maddie Does anyone want to like, does everyone want to like say how old they are or like what, if they're in high school or I'd love to know just the age range. You don't have to. You're scared. That's okay. Oh, you're muted. I'm a high school coach. Uh, I'm 36. I've actually never played water polo, but I've been coaching for 13 years. So I've pretty much learned it as I, as I've gone. So, um, oh. yeah. Nice. Maddie, I'll throw one at you. Um, so uh, before we started, we were talking about uh, the stuff we were doing virtually online and some of the uh, film breakdown. And one of the games we broke down for uh, that we did was your quarterfinal game in 2019 versus Michigan. And I think you scored four goals in that game. One of the things uh, you referenced earlier was you just like to move and you're always moving. And that's one of the things I really noticed um, uh, just about you and the way you play you're constantly moving and it looked like within that game and I know that's been over a year ago but specifically uh, Michigan had two pretty strong lefties but by the end of the game just your movement alone and those two trying to guard you just it, it kind of wore them down you know kind of took them out of that that whole uh, aspect of where they had to really focus on defense so offensively they weren't there 
So just if you could just share a little bit about your thoughts about how important it is your role as an attacker and, and how you see that and just you're constantly moving, constantly looking, constantly looking for opportunities and finding ways to drive, get open without, like you say, having to beat down the other girl, grab and hold and kick off and that kind of stuff. Yeah, just yeah of course. I, I've i always been a, a very mobile player and it's something that came a little bit naturally to me when I first started playing because I, I love swimming and I always had that kind of stamina to be able to move a lot. And so when I got to the national team, I always went a hundred percent in swim sets because I wanted to be able to have that energy to move in a game. And so when I kind of was figuring out what I was good at, I found myself always like sprinting places. And uh, I know it's kind of hard to always consistently do a move at a hundred percent speed. It's not easy. But if you're able to kind of build that stamina, that movement-based uh, skills that you think about doing are really easy to really easy to do if you have that energy to do it. And I, when I like I said, when I was finding my role, I found myself always playing on the one-two side, and even the four-five side, I, I I'm able to do the same stuff. But uh, the faster you're able to kind of like slip behind people, the easier it is to remove yourself from the physicality and you know, I, not that I'm not physical. I do grab a little bit. I'm, I'm, I would say I'm like more of a wrist grabber just to get in front of someone, but the, the kicking has never been something that I've had to do because I've always been a huge believer in, in swimming really fast. And if you're able to have that speed and that quickness to kind of counteract what someone's trying to do to you, it's, it's easy to, to move around them. And so when I have people, especially lefties, I don't know if there's any lefties in this group, but lefties love to really get close. And uh, it's just something that I've noticed with a lot of players I've played against, but that closeness to me is my advantage. And the moment you have someone really close to you, you know that in my head, I'm like, I can beat you. And uh, I, I always grab uh, a lot and I just pull and I and I chop it's like the same move I do over and over again I pull and chop and I pull and chop and uh the moment I'm in front I that's I don't have to do anything else because I have that that speed and that like breaststroke kick to to get open and uh if you're able to you know in practice or you know practice should be the hardest place to ever play water polo it's something where that's where all that building comes from and when I get to a game, like I have so much energy and practice has been harder than the game. Um, of course, games are, are very difficult because you're playing people you don't play with every day, but I'm able to kind of do all of those things because I have the energy to do them because I did it in practice. So um, uh, I would say that that wrist grab is, is my favorite, um, but I, I just sprint, I just sprint everywhere. And uh, it's become one of my advantages, um, but it, it definitely makes it tiring when you play in college and you have to play more more games in a row. Um, but that's when scouting comes into play and you have to know who you're up against and how much energy you should put, put forward into who you're guarding. And there's so many things that I do uh, that help me be, be that mobile, um, but it's just that effort. I, I put in a lot of effort into what I do and um, I work very hard and I hate saying it because it, it sounds super weird just like saying what I do but I, I definitely I work my butt off and I would say my heart rate is very high when I get out of practice sometimes and I feel like I'm going to pass out but when I get to games it's very worth it. That's awesome. Any other questions for Maddie guys? Ruby you were next. Yeah I have one. Hi, I'm 13, and um, my question is, I'll be going to nationals this year for the first time. What is the biggest thing that you would say to, like, get ready for it? For sure. Um, good luck, first of all. That's really exciting. And I, what I always like to remind people is, like, it's okay to make mistakes. Like, I'm sure you're going to make a mistake out there in, in a game, and to not let it overwhelm you and really learn from it and try new things. I've always like the reason that I love playing water polo is that there's so many things to try. And if you are wanting to try something like go out and try it and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And it's okay that it didn't work that time, but it might, might work the next time. And I, when I think about um, my time on the national team, you kind of have to find your role on a team and you'll know, find what you're good at and 
you have to be able to identify it, but you're not going to be able to do that if you don't go out there and try and you're too shy or you're too scared and just, just go for it, jump in. And if you fail, that's okay. Um, it might not feel the, the best. It might feel a little scary, but, um, don't be afraid to try new things. Um, but do it with a hundred percent effort. Cause then you'll know that you, you tried your best. Thank you so much. No problem. Good luck. It's Thank exciting. you. There's some nationals. Well, let me tell a little story because I, when I went to like my first national team trip, of course I was horrified um, and a little scared. I was like too afraid to ask anyone um, what I needed to do. So I just was like, okay, here we go. And I was, I love to lob and um, most embarrassing moment of my entire life. I lobbed the ball in my like first, I think it was like my second, maybe third game I was playing with them. And I was like, so excited. And I was like, I'm going to try this lob. And the center defender caught my lob, like caught it. And so embarrassing. I was so embarrassed. And I was like, I'm never lobbing ever again. Like, so like with a horrified, I was so scared. And I was like, he's never going to want me back. Like it's going to be so, I had all these thoughts in my head. Um, I was 15, maybe 16. And we watched it on video. We watched it like 10 times on video, like rewinding. Everyone's laughing. I'm like, ha ha, like pretending it's funny. But deep down, I was like so sad. Um, and, but like the hugest learning moment of my entire life, um, going into the Olympic year, I told myself like, I'm going to be the best lobber in the entire world. Like lo the lob is going to be my shot. And uh, I would say my, like my first Olympic goal that I scored was a lob. Uh, so just kind of like perspective wise, like it's okay to fail. It might be scary and it might be, not a great feeling but it will come back like whatever maybe in the next week or in a year or two years and you'll be like i did it finally i did it and it will feel so good so don't be afraid to fail you'll have stories to tell like that where they're <laughs> very embarrassing but they'll be good thank you so much no problem don't be afraid to fail awesome yeah, don't be afraid to fail anyone else question for maddie All right. Well, again, Maddie, thank you so much for your time. This has been an absolute blast. Um, I know I was just jotting down some notes while you were while you were rolling. So thank you again. Uh, the Midwest Zone thanks you. Um, and best of luck in 2021. We hope to talk to you before then. But um, yeah, just thank you again. We're really appreciative. No problem. Thanks for having me. And uh, I'm always open to doing this again. Or if anyone has any questions, I know I'm always a huge believer in helping those um, who want help. And if you DM me, I'm, a, I'm an Instagrammer. I try, I'm very bad at like finding the DM, but like if you message me, I will get back to you at some point. It just might not be soon, but I'm, I'm here to help and I might play with you one day. So if I play for a while, um, I might play with some people. So I'm always, always open to help. Awesome. Well, thanks again. And thanks everyone for tuning in. Uh, have a great day and enjoy the day. Thanks guys. Thank you, Maddie. Thank you very Thank much. You. No problem. Good luck with one day, huh? Yeah, thanks. It'll be fun. <laughs> Hopefully. All right. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye. All right. Talk to you later.